Thank you for joining us this week for BG24 News. I'm Dominic Ferrante. Monday kicked off the first day of homecoming at Bowling Green State University. One way students chose to show their school spirit was to paint the town orange and brown. Some went to locations on campus, others went to a few local businesses to decorate for the upcoming weekend. They hung streamers, balloons, and even painted a few windows. Many more activities are to come as BGSU homecoming weekend gets closer and closer. When you think of BGSU, Freddie and Falcon Frida fly into mind. In light of homecoming weekend, reporter Mariah Clausen shares the story of the bird's humble beginnings. Those bright orange shoes from a mile away. So Freddie and Frida Falcon have been promoting school spirit for 68 years. Freddie Falcon was born oh, in 1950 you, in the minds of the it. members of the Alpha Phi Omega fraternity to create school spirit. The first Freddie costume was a paper mache head, feathered cape, and brown sweatsuit. Originally, Frida Falcon joined Freddie in 1966 as Mrs. Freddie Falcon. Mrs. Freddie Falcon would appear at women's home games, go out to center court at halftime, and lay an egg. Frida reemerged in 1980 as Freddie's little sister and sidekick. To be Freddie or Frida is a high honor. 2017-2018's Freddie, Spencer Lockwood, had a memorable time being a bird. Being Freddie Falcon was a great experience. I was able to uh, touch the community in a way that is not common and very unique. Um, I was able to bring spirit to people that normally may not have spirit, um, be able to pull out some like fun uh, experiences for people that may like be on the sideline and doesn't want to like participate as much. Spirit Traditions head coach Tyler Strong says the birds aren't flying away anytime soon. He said that BGSU wouldn't be the BGSU we know and love without these guys. So I guess the birds have made their nest. One thing is for sure, BGSU and the Bowling Green community love Freddie and Frida Falcon. We truly will be Falcons forever. Reporting for BG24 News, I'm Mariah Clausen. BGSU continues to offer an open forum with the author of their yearly common read. Monday night in the Lenhart Grand Ballroom, author Adam Alter gave a presentation. He discussed the rise of addiction to technology. Alter brought up popular apps to connect with the student's audience. He drove into many ways companies make technology more and more addicting. He also offered some solutions to how they could overcome the heavy dependency on technology. Freshman Sophia Walsher was impressed by how Alter captured the crowd. You know, a little, not rude, but like that way where it's almost patronizing. And I think that he did a really good job of assessing the issues that related to us. He talked a lot about um, not just, you know, oh, teens spend a lot of time on their phones. He talked about the social implications, which I really resonated with as someone who does feel really consumed with social media. Alter is the author of the book, Irresistible. Now, Chase Bachman joins us in the studio with a look at sports. Chase? Thanks, Tom. The latest chapter in the I-75 rivalry was written Saturday. It had a familiar ending, though. That's when the BGSU Falcons took on the UT Rockets. Reporter Garrett McKinney was there for all the action. I-75 took place at the Glass Bowl in 2018 for the 83rd meeting between the Bowling Green Falcons and the Toledo Rockets. Nearly 25,000 packed the stands to see which school would take control of the series, which was tied 39, 39, and 4 all time coming into Saturday. The Rockets struck first and capitalized on a series of BG errors to take a commanding 17-0 lead in the first quarter. Trailing by three possessions on the road, the Falcons battled back, scoring touchdowns on their next three drives, all by way of sophomore running back Andrew Clare. Claire had two explosive plays in the first half, igniting the offense. The Falcons trailed by just three at halftime. Toledo opened the scoring in the second half and took a 10-point lead. Then quarterback Jarrett Dagey proceeded to march the Falcon offense down the field for nearly seven minutes before finding receiver Quentin Morris for a touchdown in the back of the end zone, putting the score at 31-28. but Toledo's defense held BG scoreless for its next four drives in the fourth quarter, while the Rockets' offense scored on three possessions in a row. A momentum shift in the fourth quarter found the Falcons on the wrong end of another lopsided loss, 
with a final score of 52 to 36. Head coach Mike Jinks felt the outcome of the game hinged on a critical series early in the fourth quarter. They gave us a chance, you know, and really the key one is we could have found a way to hit that play, the vertical that we threw to Scotty. Um, you know, that was a huge, huge play right there. Really didn't want to uh, get back in there and run. What we were having success with was some misdirection, gap scheme plays. And when you're pulling guys down on the happy foot yard line, you know, you're a little hesitant to do that because you're worried about the, uh, you know, a, a potential safety. So we took a shot there on first down, which, I mean, it's, it's there, penalty, no penalty. You know, I'll leave that for you guys to decide. Um, you know, and that, to me, that was the key series of the ball game. The Falcons' next game is homecoming versus Western Michigan this Saturday at 3 p.m. in the Doit. Reporting for BG24 Sports, I'm Garrett McKinney. In other sports, the women's soccer team is continuing their dominance of the MAC. They faced Eastern Michigan on Sunday. The Falcons were riding a six-game win streak heading into their matchup versus the Eagles. BGSU sits on top of the conference as the only remaining undefeated team in the MAC. The cold and rainy conditions made this contest one of the muddiest of the year. After a scoreless first half, the Falcons came out more aggressive in the second. Then, in the 57th minute, Nikki Cox fired a terrific goal that bounced off the right post to make the score 1-0 Falcons. That was all the women needed as the Falcons grabbed their sixth straight win in the MAC and the seventh straight overall. Um, opposed to the beginning of the season is like finishing games and like figuring out how to win no matter what's going on whether the other team's better than us or the other team the fields like this just like whatever's happening we're gonna win so the Falcons next match is this Friday where they'll face the second place flashes of Kent State uh, that game is at Cochran Stadium and that is all for sports Dom homecoming weekend starts tomorrow Autumn Stevens joins us live from the newsroom with some tips on how to make the weekend more fun. Autumn? Thanks, Dom. For any BGSU student, homecoming is the best day of the year. So when it comes to going into the weekend, there are five things you want to remember. The first, make sure you have your spirit wear. As you'll find out later through Kendall, the weekend might be a little chilly, so I suggest bundling up. Start with your favorite crew neck, and if you don't have one, Falcon Outfitters is available in the Union. And you can't always forget your foam finger as well. So once you have your spirit wear, you're ready to go. But wait, you need a ticket. So head over to the athletics yeah. website, and there you'll find tickets tab. And if you have trouble signing in, claiming your tickets, just know you can call the office, and they'll run through those steps right through your phone. So it comes to three once you have your tickets. Gather up your friends, whether that's alumni, your friends and family, and head on over to step number four, which is the tailgate. So you're gonna eat some good food, have some good times, and get pumped up for the game because it is a good weekend and Coach Jinks is hoping to bring his team to victory. So you've got all four, you've got your tickets, your friends, and your spirit wear. So what's number five, you say? Well, if you're gonna be a Falcon forever, remember to keep your talons up. Back to you, Dom. Awesome, thank you, Autumn. A long line of events set up throughout the year reached a peak last weekend. It happened with the Rally Cap Sports 5K Color Run. Reporter Courtney Story found out more. <coughs> the mission of Rally Cap Sports is to create positive sports environments fostering social integration, healthy living, and greater self confidence for children and young adults with special needs. Rally Cap Sports is a national organization that supports people of all ages with special needs. The foundation provides a high quality sports league for children and young adults so they can participate within their community. Mariana Matova, faculty advisor of the Rally Cap BG chapter, talks about what the organization is. Our Rally Cap is a nonprofit organization. We serve people with special needs. We're all about recreational sports and creating fun and inclusive environment for our participants. The 5K is an event they put on. Anyone in the community can participate. Jessica Young, a participant and student in the 5K, talks about how she heard about Rally Cap and her 5K experience. This is my first year experiencing Rally Cap. Um, I heard about it through online, but I love Rally Cap. I'm actually a special ed major, so I love the idea of being able to incorporate anyone with special needs into different things. Um, never done the 5K before, so the color run made it a lot of fun, um, waiting for the color to be thrown at you and everyone cheering you on. 
Within the organization are the Rally Cat players. They are boys and girls seven or older that participate. In this organization, they use the term abilities, not disabilities. Lily Alton, Operations Director of Rally Cap National, along with a Rally Cap player, talks about her involvement with the organization. So I got started my freshman year at BG here in 2014 when Rally Cap was first coming to campus. I uh, started as a volunteer and then I quickly got involved on the executive board this next spring, which we call the Rally Corps. The Rally team at BGSU is student-led and all members seek to advance the mission and vision of Rally Cap sports. Reporting for BG24 News, I am Courtney Story. Downtown Bowling Green has a new look. A health and smoothie store is open for business. Reporter Danielle Kane has the scoop on the newest addition to North Main Street. Bars and pizza places aren't the only thing in BG. Get inspired open in downtown Bowling Green right across the street from Beckett's. They have another branch in Perrysburg called Get Healthy. Get Inspired offers a variety of food and drinks, ranging from healthy sweet treats to tea that burns up to 100 calories. Manager of the BG location, Annette Martin, talks about what they have to offer. We have energy tea, we have smoothies for meal replacements, whether they're for weight loss or just energy or just to feel good. Um, Herbalife has been around for 38 years. They are also offering student discounts and study groups. Senior Kayla Corbett talks about her first time at the BG branch. I was so excited to find out that Get Fit Nutrition opened in downtown Bowling Green. Um, we have one back from where I'm from, from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I love the idea of it. And it's like super easy. They're really filling. Um, there's like so many different flavors. Like I don't even know how many there are. This is also a woman-owned business that BG is welcoming. Reporting from BG 24 News, I'm Danielle Kane. The city of Bowling Green is known for a wide variety of shops and cafes, but none target tea drinkers. The new local business is hoping to change that. Reporter Nick Dombey went to investigate. Calico, Sage, and Time have been in business for nearly 40 years. Attached to a house from the late 1800s, the boutique has expanded their business into tea time. Mayor Edwards, State Representative Teresa Gavarone, and other local leaders gathered outside the store Thursday morning for the official ribbon cutting. During the ceremony, the store was honored with two documents of congratulations from the state of Ohio. Inside, the official party was not the only one sitting down for tea. In one of the other rooms, Debbie and her friends were enjoying a birthday party. Well, I think it's wonderful because usually we have to drive to Toledo or Finley, um, Sylvania uh, to do our teas. And so this is really convenient. Tea Time's creation was spearheaded by Lisa Palmer, who joins the list of 47 women business owners in Bowling Green. Lisa hopes the new store can win over local tea drinkers. We're here, we're uh, ready to serve, and hopefully you can come in and enjoy our relaxing atmosphere. And uh, a very, we like to bring, but we're hoping to bring back, you know, the fine dining experience. Tea Time's debut puts another woman-owned business on the map for Bowling Green officially recognized as one of the best small cities in Ohio. I'm Nick Dombey, reporting for BG24 News. 70 years ago, that's when the ROTC program at BGSU started, and it's now getting stronger and stronger every year. Reporter Raylan Cleveland has more information about what made the program a success. Bowling Green State University's Reserve Officer Training Program is dedicated to turning eager cadets into dedicated officers of the United States Army. Bowling Green's Army ROTC program offers leadership training, drill and ceremony, tactics, land navigation, physical training, and more. So the things we learn in ROTC, uh, both in our class and leadership labs, uh, really is about leadership. And it doesn't matter you know, what career field you go into, whether it's Army or not. Uh, leadership is a trait that I think everyone can always benefit from. We now go over to weather with Kendall Linenkugel. Thanks, Dom. But before we get into the day's forecast, the National Weather Service held a weather spotters training on the campus of BGSU, and I was there to find out more. 
National Weather Service Cleveland office brought their first winter and fall sky-worn weather spotters training session to the campus of Bowling Green State University. Members of the community came in to learn about what they could do to help when their own town may be experiencing extreme winter weather. Wood County EMA Director Brad Gilbert talked about why they chose Wood County as their first location for a training session and for the fall and winter months. It, it's really tough on their staff to get out to all the counties in northern Ohio and into Pennsylvania um, in the springtime. Uh, so they, they came up with the idea of, of splitting up the counties across northern Ohio. Not only will members of the community assist the National Weather Service, but the first responders who are already on the road will be able to help in a more timely fashion. The more educated we can make them to what's going on with the weather, they can more accurately report it to both emergency management and to the weather service. Training sessions are currently going on statewide and spring sessions will be announced at a later date. And now on to our forecast. Fall has finally been starting to get into full swing with chillier temperatures on the way. Right now we're riding about 58 degrees with mostly sunny skies, but it's been a quite breezy outside. We've actually got sustained west winds of 29 miles per hour. That's going to taper down as we get into the evening hours, but it's still going to be quite breezy. Tonight we have a low of 43. The winds are actually going to taper down to 15 miles per hour, and it's going to start clouding up a little bit as we head later into the night. But if we take a look at the weekly forecast, Friday we have a high of 54 with only a 20% chance of rain, but it's going to be a little bit partly cloudy outside. The weekend looks gorgeous as we have highs of 52 and 59 and partly and mostly sunny skies. As we head into Monday, the chance of rain hikes up just a little bit. We only have about 40% chance of rain with a high of 51. But Tuesday we have a high of 54 and mostly sunny skies are once again returning. That's it for weather. Back to you, Dom. Awesome. Thank you, Kendall. Thanks for joining us for joining us for this week on BG24 News. I'm Dominic Ferrante.